Welcome to another edition of the Gospel of Photography. I'm Shion Akisomi and today I'm so excited about what we'll be discussing. We'll be talking today on what we call copyright. And basically that means, in simple words, who owns the right to a picture? Many photographers have gotten into many issues with clients or fellow colleagues as to this particular question. It basically means whenever I take the picture of someone, someplace, who owns the right? Is it that person in the picture or me, the photographer? That is quite an interesting question, but it's something that we'll actually have to iron out on this episode. And I have a feeling that we probably might not be able to fully discuss the weight of this matter in just one episode. That is where you come in. I would appreciate if you send in your suggestions, your questions, or a particular scenario you've had maybe with a photographer regarding this issue of copyright. Who has the right? Perhaps you've had an encounter with a photographer that maybe covered your event or took a portrait of you. And then the next time you saw the pictures, it was on the internet, on Facebook. And then you approach the photographer and you're like, this picture is not your right. Why did you put my picture on the Facebook? I don't like that publicity. And then the photographer, you know, starts arguing with you. The question is, who owns the picture? Who has the right to the picture? That is the question of the century. And it's one that you need to know the answer to as a photographer, because that could save you some legal fees. Because by the time they are taking you to court over a question as simple as this, you wouldn't find it funny. Trust me. Let's take a short break and we'll be right back. My name is Femi Adewi. Keep watching the Gospel of Photography. Welcome back. We're still on the issue of this copyright law. The question still remains, who owns the right to a picture? Is it the photographer or the photography? or the client, you know, so to say. And that is an interesting question. We took this same question and went out there on the road and asked a couple of people, people that are both professionals in the industry and people that represent the average client. Interestingly, we got quite some interesting response. Yeah, everybody who have contributed to the making of a picture should have a copyright of the picture. When I say everybody, I mean the photographer, the clients who pay for the job, the model, the makeup artist, costumer, hairstylist, and so on. I think both the photographer and client has the right to the pictures. Because uh, once a picture is taken for something, a specific use, a magazine cover or something, fine, uh, the photographer will actually use it for the work it's needed for but after the whole thing i just think you should also be able to let out the pictures to the model or whoever has a hand in the picture it could be a makeup artist or any other person for me i think it's everybody that contributed something to making that picture happen that has the right to it if a client says i can post a picture online it boils down to the fact that what kind of agreement do i have with that client in the first place if she signed to me at the beginning of the job for me to use the pictures for my advert, then probably I have to re refer her to her contract. But if we don't have a signed agreement, I don't have any right to post it online if she doesn't want it there. But technically, I think just like any other hard work, uh, a photograph is owned by the creator of the photograph, who is the photographer. And um, when a client pays for, photograph, for, for a photograph to be taken, is paying for a service and what the photographer is rendering is, is the service. Now the image that is created is owned by the photographer technically.
So welcome back. I hope you learned a few things from those people that we interviewed. Better yet, you probably might disagree with some of them. Do us a favor, send us an email at gospeloffotography at elophotos.com and let us know what you think. Or perhaps you've had a personal experience, maybe with a photographer or you're a photographer, you've had an experience with a client. Let us know and perhaps we could, you know, talk a little bit more on that. But at this junction, we perhaps need to ask, what is copyright? You see, for authors, book publishers, music producers and composers, photographers, and basically anybody in the creative industry, copyright produces the assurance that they can share their work with the public without fear of unauthorized use, without fear of being sued or being taken to the court. It basically covers book publishing, photography, sound recording, film production, and gives creators the right to control the distribution of their work. Looking at that definition, therefore, perhaps you will realize how a lot of us photographers are actually selling our pension. Many times when you are given the right or the privilege to take a picture, look beyond just the ability to just snap or press the shutter button. Ask yourself, this artistic work that you are creating, would there be an issue if you were to post this picture online? Perhaps an issue with that client in question? If the answer is yes, these are things you need to resolve because you could be playing with your pension. And when I say pension, you are talking 20, 30, 40 years down the line. Different countries have different copyright laws. For example, in Nigeria, the copyright law that we have is actually the one that was enacted into law in 2004. And this is where I would actually appreciate if you actually go online and read about the law. It's actually seemingly comprehensive, but it basically gives the creator the right to his work. That means regardless of who owns the equipment, if you give me your camera and I take a picture, the fact that I'm the one that took that picture, I basically created something artistic. Okay, and that gives me the right to that particular picture up to over 50 or 60 years after I'm dead. Yes, you heard me right. That means if I take a picture right now and then I die maybe a few years time, up to 50 to 70 years after I'm dead, I still have the right to the picture for the very fact that I was the one that snapped it. Now, this might not rest well with some people. But either way, you need to make this clear to every client. And that's as a photographer, as a professional photographer. Most clients don't know this. So you need to make this clear to every single client so that you don't end up burning your pension. That being said, there are some jobs that you actually end up getting that you perhaps will need to read the fine line. I've had clients send me briefs in which they were mentioning all the exclusive copyrights belong to us. And that's where I knew that, wow, 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 something is up here. If a client tells me they would eventually own all the copyrights, then I need to be conscious of the price that I'm charging. Basically, they are telling me that this picture that you are taking, Mr. Sheung, you will have no right to share it on any of your platforms forever and ever. <laughs> that is a big one right there. You mean I wouldn't have the right to share it on my Facebook page, on my Instagram page? And if the answer to that is no, you wouldn't have the right, then the question should be what amount are they paying me? Because I'm giving up a lot. Many photographers are not conscious of this. I'm advising you to actually know what it actually entails to be a photographer. More importantly, to understand what this copyright law says. Better yet, if you have actually been a client before that has been photographed by professional photographers, this is something you should actually be aware of. A good example of maybe what I could use to explain this would be the zebra crossing that are actually present on most roads at least in major countries in the world. The fact that the zebra crossing is there also does not automatically mean that every car that is coming or every driver that is coming 
would actually stop for you. The zebra crossing actually implicates that, look, any pedestrian that is crossing on this particular demarcated lines should be given the right of way. What if you have a drunk driver that is heading your way? Will you now be saying, ah, oh, look, I have the right to walk on this, you know, pathway? You probably might end up, you know, in heaven before you know it. So as a photographer, it's still good to educate your clients because not all clients understand this. And you, want, you don't want to find out the hard way. You don't want to find out when you are being summoned to a court. That being said, our personality of the week today would share just a little more light on this copyright issue. It's someone that has been in the industry for a while, someone that I respect so much. But before we bring it on board, I think it's also important that I mention and I've stressed this over and over again. Whatever questions that you have, whatever suggestions, do not hesitate to let us know. We really want to make this program better. Is it on this copyright issue? In fact, do you disagree with some of what I've said? Do let me know, of course, with you know, facts and points that will buttress your points. Send us a mail at gospelofphotography at elophotos.com. Also, if by any chance you actually miss any of these episodes, Remember that you can always go online. I actually watch the same episode over and over again. And that's the advantage of the internet. You could watch it 300 times if you choose, as compared to just the TV that you're watching right now that you only watch it once. Watch it, send us your comments, subscribe to our YouTube page, subscribe to our Vimeo page, like us on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, Plus. we're on all the social media platform just to try to reach as many people as we can. We are trying to preach the gospel of photography to the ends of the earth. Okay, so at this junction, let's bring in our personality of the week and let's learn a few tips on how to be better at this game called photography. Stay tuned. What I think has helped us as a brand, uh, Shola Animation Photography, one, fear. Fear of failure. We don't want to fail. We, we see a lot of photographers out there. They're doing amazingly well. There are some photographers that I know around my, my street. There are about five, six photographers around my street. And most people don't even know their name. And they are super successful, you understand? Um, I'm afraid of failure. So because I'm afraid of failure, I want to I want to work more. I sleep around 1 a.m. and wake up around 4 a.m. And there are sometimes uh, when I'm so tired in the office, I'll just put one or two chairs together and sleep because I spend a lot of time researching on how we can do better, how we can better serve our clients, what we're doing wrong, ask for feedback. So the first thing I'll say that has been helping us is fear of failure. We do not want to fail. In the process of not wanting to fail, we fail severally and by failing severally we know what to improve on so that next time we will not do that then um, use of technology i would say use of technology has helped us as well um, there's there's not a better time to to succeed than now you understand you have everything at your fingertips to succeed when it comes to technology from your phone you can share news about what you're doing and people that are interested in what you're doing will come share your story if they believe your story is interesting so um, fear or failure use of technology and recommendations recommendations as well then research has also helped us as well so those are the things that i believe has helped our brand grow my own opinion um i believe the the artist is the is the sole owner of the picture the copyright belongs to the artist. Uh, there was a situation I was in, in a particular um, during a particular meeting with a client, and he told me we had done the negotiations, and he told me that, uh, by the way, I don't want to see our pictures flying all, all around social media. I'm okay with that. Then the next thing he said triggered me, triggered something in me. He said, because the pictures you take are copyright. I just said, excuse me, sir. He said yes. I said whatever picture I take for you, they are my copyrights. They are not your copyright. He said, what? I said, yes, because the work of an artist is the copyright of that artist. What you're paying for is the license. You understand? So just in case you are, 
a lot of uh, because we are excited about photography we just want to create images and share it on social media they there there are some clients that will make you sign what is called a non-disclosure uh, agreement you can't post their images on social media good if you have a consensus if they've paid for that you understand some will willingly want you to to share their images on social media but when it comes to copyright who owns the camera let's even imagine that the camera belongs to them immediately you take the picture you understand it is your copyright and if you're not sure about what copyright is in photography just go and research about it it will save you a lot of headache because your clients might not know because they are paying you they believe uh, i own whatever you create you understand you need to educate your clients you understand when you uh, educate your clients they will know the boundaries then they will know if they want to go on with you or if they want to find a mediocre photographer that does not know his or her rights and take advantage of but then whatever image you create is your own signature you understand and the copyright belongs to you one of the challenges i had when i was starting out was um, convincing uh, my folks uh, that um, i can be successful in, in photography that was hard actually um, because I just turned down a job from an accountant firm in Abuja and I told my mom that since I've been trying out with photography, I would like to go full time into photography. And I remember what my mom to told me uh, that time. She said, that photography you want to do, good if you believe in it, but why don't you take the job and add photography to it? And I told her that diverted attention causes multiplied tension. I'd rather face one. And she was like, what about if it doesn't work? Well, if it doesn't, how it will work. I've burnt my bridge to white collar jobs, so it has to work. You know what, mom? I will make it work, you understand? So my determination to make it work regardless, although the, the future was not clear, but I took it a day at a time. So my idea was that whatever assignment I got to do per time, I will give it my all. My all may not make the work fantastic but i will give it my best so that willingness to give it a shot one day at a time did help me um, overcome um, the major obstacle of of um, convincing my folks so one of the projects i'm um, working on or the one that i will say um, i'm active on that has been most fulfilling for me is um, a documentary I'm um, shooting on tattoo, on tattoo series. Now, why, why is this so interesting for me? I, I realize that where this part of the world, people see uh, tattoo as taboos sometimes because of the reli uh, their religion inclination, and to some people it is art. Now, um, the first set of tattoo that I saw, I grew up. Uh, seeing that particular person with tattoo but then I, I, well it is tattoo because if it's laceration on your body artistic laceration on your body I think it's tattoo but then these kind of tattoos are the kind that um, when you are lost in the olden days maybe you, you left a village and you got to another village and, and you're lost when people read your tattoo they know what village you came from what compound you came from and they can take you back there so that sparkled my interest about um, the photography documentary that I'm doing about tattoo. I've been to uh, three continents, uh, four countries, shooting days. And the interesting thing is that when I talk to people about tattoo, I see people uh, with tattoo and I ask them, um, I'm doing a documentary on tattoos. Um, why do you have your tattoos? Some people will tell you it is art. Some people will start showing you stories. This was because of my grandfather that died. He was flying uh, Apache helicopter during World War II. Uh, this I had, I, I saw a photographer, uh, no, I saw a guy in Brazil that had tattoo all over his body. And he actually showed me where he had camera. And I'll, I'm like, are you a photographer? He said, yes, I'm a photographer. And I'm like, can I see more? He showed me more. Then I, I told him, can you, can you remove your dress? Can I see more? And he actually removed his dress, you understand? And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. So that is the, 
um, interesting project that I am working on and because of the different stories and I've interviewed hippies on the highway, I've interviewed people walking from Peru to America and their stories are different, you understand, so it makes the project interesting for me. Hello viewers, my name is Amosu Muturayo. Keep watching the Gospel of Photography. Gotcha. I hope you've enjoyed the program so far. At this junction, it's important to realize that this copyright issue is not something we can exhaust in one episode. That's why we need your feedback. Send us, you know, a mail and let us see how we can still treat it, of course, in another episode. At this junction, also, we'll talk about the question that two people send to our email. The first one was sent by a gentleman, of course, name withheld because he didn't want me to mention his name. He was asking, Mr. Sheung, is the Canon 5D camera okay for me to buy? The answer to that question is yes. But then again, perhaps you are asking the wrong question to start with. The question you should be asking is, what type of photography do you want to focus on? If all you be taking with that camera are passport pictures, then in my own opinion, using a Canon 5D, whether Mark 1 or Mark 10, it's an overkill. You do not need a Canon 5D to be taking passport pictures. In fact, better yet, perhaps your camera phone will still do a great job. So ask yourself, what type of photography do you want to do? Is I saying, Mr. Shen, I want to learn how to drive. Should I buy a Rolls Royce? The question is, where are you going? If you buy a Rolls Royce, the roads that will, you'll be taking it on, how durable are they? In fact, in some cases, it might even be a bicycle that will get you faster to where you are going in some areas than a Rolls Royce. So ask yourself, well, what type of photography you, do you want to do? Is it wildlife? Is it sports photography? Before you determine the type of camera that will fit your budget. Okay, be very strict about your budget. So the next question was sent by actually a lady and she was asking, Mr. Chen, is it okay to get a loan to start my photography business? And my answer to that question is, yes, it's okay to get a loan to start your photography business. As long as the loan is not from a bank, please, please, please do not get a loan from a bank. To start a photography business now this might not seem very palatable to many bankers that might be hearing me the truth is most people starting out in the photography industry are actually not good business managers so imagine you starting out with this ten thousand dollar loan from a bank and you are not good with managing finances Regardless of what you tell me, most of us are not good. In fact, I'm still working on being a better financial manager. <laughs> I was recently looking at my books and I saw the importance of actually hiring an accountant to audit our books. Okay, so it's okay to get a loan, but not from a bank. I'd rather you get a loan from whether a family friend or a relative that will not charge you any interest. And somebody that will understand that, look, okay, if he doesn't pay back in six months or one month time, they wouldn't come chasing you with the police or with court summons to take you to court. It's really crucial. I'm begging you, please, don't get a bank loan for this. Except, of course, your dad or mom is the owner of the bank. By which case, feel free to get as much loan as you want. Okay? So that's that for today's question and answers. If you have... Any interesting questions that has been, you know, bothering you relating to photography, of course, don't write, you know, asking me, how do I marry or propose to my lady? That is not a photography related question. But any photography related question, send in your questions to the email on your screen, gospelofphotography at elophotos.com. At this point, our social media page of the week is owned by a photographer that I hold in high esteem, one of my mentors in the industry. Though he's not in my country, Nigeria, is a far, far away continent called United States of America. His name is Rick Salmon and is the head photographer at Rick Salmon Photography. This is somebody that has been taking pictures for the past 30 years plus. 
and you need to check out his Google Plus page. The guy has almost 800,000 fans and no wonder he has that much fans because his pictures are wow. I mean, he's been taking pictures from almost 100 countries all over the world. The guy has a resume. Check out his Google Plus page and hopefully you will be inspired. You realize we have not been able to show any photo of the week yet. That's because you guys have not been sending your pictures. It's okay. Don't be afraid. I mean, we wouldn't shout or scold or discipline you even if your pictures are terrible. Send it to us. In fact, one advantage you get is also some positive criticism. Some people will probably analyze your picture and probably tell you how to do better next time. Whatever pictures that we've considered to be the best, we'll of course show them on our subsequent episode as the photo of the week. Okay? Please send those pictures. You'd be surprised somebody else might actually admire the pictures that you think were not so great. Send up the pictures to the email address on your screen and we'll get back to you. Okay? At this junction, we've come to the end of another exciting episode of the Gospel of Photography. We started out talking about the copyright laws that we talked and interviewed a few photographers and a few clients got their opinions and we also had an interesting personality of the week plus the social media page of the week a lot packed inside this short 30 minutes okay in case you missed any part of it remember you could go to our platform online whether facebook youtube vimeo and view the whole thing all over again I'm still Shinwaki Swami and I'm still your host. Whatever you do, make sure you stay tuned to this channel every Tuesdays from 12 o'clock to 12.30 as we bring you another exciting episode of the Gospel of Photography. Keep taking those pictures.